Hey what's up coders welcome back to my channel. Today we will see how to deal with JSON data in your Flutter application. Whenever we build projects or application it's inevitable to deal with JSON data because most of the time your app is either communicating with the backend or with the services and one of the most commonly used data format is JSON. So before we start building up this UI which is a simple uh, book app I think it's important to have some basic understanding of JSON. So to do that, I'm using the Dartpad. Well, it's a free online um, editor and it's very easy to use. All right, first thing we're using this package, which is the Dart Convert, so that we could um, use the encode and decode functions so that we could pass our JSON data. Well, if you look at the JSON here, it's a very simple one, uh, which has an ID, book name, book author, cover, rating, and the view. Now, whenever you see this curly braces, it means it's the JSON object. And if you see the square brackets, which is this one, it's the JSON array or a list. Now, first thing, we will see how to decode it. So for that, it's the main function we're using, which is the entry point. So we're saying JSON decode, and we're passing this JSON object. Now, when I'm passing this JSON object here we need to know what is the return type when we look at this it is the return type can be found using result dot runtime type so when i do this and click on run here it says map because it's returning a map now say for example if i have an array or a list and if i have a collection of json objects say for example i have another book details then it becomes a list or an array of JSON objects. So as of now, for simplicity or for the demo purpose, I'm just using a single JSON. All right, now we will start passing those details and see if we can retrieve the book name or the reviews or the rating values. So what I'm gonna do is first thing, I'm gonna see if I can retrieve the book name. So for that, you're gonna use result and then I'm going to use the key name, which is the book name. And then when I click on run, I'm going to get the book name here. So there you see. Now, since this is directly inside the JSON, I can quickly retrieve it. A particular review to be displayed. How do I do that? It's possible. So for that, you have to say result and I'm going to use comments because that's the name of the key because it has to first loop through this values. And since this is an list or an, it's basically an array and it has two items, reviews by Kathy. So I need to loop through the comments and retrieve the second value. So for that, I what I have to do is result comments and the position would be one because the arrays index starts from zero. And next I'm going to say the key value. So what do I want? I want the review. So I would say review. There you go. And now when I click on run, I would get this is my favorite American novel. So this is how you retrieve your JSON value. Now this is a simple dot example so that you could retrieve it on console. But now we got to see how to retrieve um, this JSON into our Flutter application. So let's move on to the UI part and uh, we will see how to do this. All right, so moving on to the UI part, it is a very simple um, list view um, where it shows you the collection of books. And I found this UI very interesting uh, where you have uh, a container and you have another container overlapping it and it's not like the simple list view which is like one below the other with the details so I thought you could use it like for your e-commerce app and you have a, a product and a few details about the product to be displayed so you could have this container either on a left or right it's very uh, simple easy to implement and at the same time it gives you a different um, UI structure so the data that I'm getting here is from the external. It's not a static. 
All right. Uh, regarding the data generation part, here I'm using a third-party tool, an online API mocking um, a tool service, which is called the Mockero. Uh, it's very easy. It allows you to generate a, a free data, and it has a lot of cool features where you can create your schema and then connect your schema with your API. So the uh, the creation part is very simple. They have a couple of um, tutorials also available where you can look into it to see how you could create. Uh, the best part is it has a lot of custom types like custom list, data set, um, where I've used the book cover here, and um, you have the sequential or you want the random numbers. So you have a lot of things to choose from, and I think it's really handy if you're working on a sample project and you want to test your data set and you know the format but you don't want to work on the real set of data you can definitely use this and you can also preview your uh, JSON and this is what I'm using in my um, UI it's a very simple JSON I think in my next series um, I would be covering a little more complex JSON and um, that's where you'll get to see uh, a more in-depth uh, discussion about JSON. So here it's a simple array of JSON objects because all I need was just the book's detail. Please feel free to, uh, to try this um, uh, tool and uh, it's definitely handy. All right, so moving on with the implementation part, there are a couple of things that we need to do before we start with the UI part. So the first thing I have to find a class which is the books and the name, author, cover. These are the same key values that I used in my um, JSON object. So if you look at the details, I mean here, let me show you. Okay, so you have the same details, the book name, book author, cover, rating, and the views. So I've used them and uh, the same constructor here with those values. Now, before we start with the UI, there is another uh, important feature that we need to understand, which is the future. Now I'm using a future function here and we also want to make a request HTTP request to this external server which is the Mockero. So for that you need to add the plugin which is the HTTP and this is the version that I'm using. So make sure that you add this version and import the package, the HTTP and the convert. So make sure you have all these and the async. I'll let you know in a minute as to why we are using these package async. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write the function future, which is an asynchronous one. And this function is gonna be book details. And this is asynchronous. Now inside this, I'm gonna use a variable that makes the HTTP request. So I'll copy the API link. All right, this is the link and this is the key. Please do not use the same key because this is something that I have created. It's a dummy account and I will not be using it after this video. So please feel free to create one. It's free and you would get a different key for the one that you're creating. Then next we're going to decode this particular data. So for that I'm going to use JSON data and um, I'm going to use the function which is the decode and what am I going to decode is this data that I'm receiving it from this API service. Next. Since uh, my API if you look at this it is actually a list list of json so for that in order to loop through all this element i have to use a for loop and then i'm going to add this to the constructor and retrieve them all right so for that i'm using a simple uh, for loop statement now what i'm doing is i'm looping through the json data and then i'm getting uh, then getting the details of it adding in the constructor and adding it in a list which is of type books. So let me quickly define the list as well. All right, there you go. So you have this um, book details defined and you're storing all the values that you retrieve from the API into this 
and you are returning it. Now to give you a few details about the future, it's basically a function which is asynchronous type. Whenever this operation is done, it either produces a result which could be either a potential value or an error and that will be available sometime in the future. Now depending on these values, I mean whatever I'm getting has to be represented in an UI. The details that we get from the future could be either a pending or completed or an error state. So you need to update your UI also accordingly. So for that reason, we are using Future Builder. So with the help of Future, we are getting the details. Now, how do we represent that in our Flutter app? So for that, we use this Future Builder where it builds itself based on the latest snapshot of the interactions with the future. So that is what we are going to see in our next section. So now we will see how to use this function, which is the book detail inside our future builder and display the details. So moving on to the UI part, I have, uh, well, if you look at the um, UI, it's a very simple um, list view, which is a scrollable one. And it has this section. Now, first we will focus on the outer section and then we'll move on to this part start with I'm not using an app bar here I'm using a custom app bar so if you haven't watched my gradient video I have shown you how to create these custom app bars with a gradient color so similar way I have um, used the same concept uh, in this video so I'll leave a link in the description as to how to create these custom app bars and you can follow the same here so for that I've already created the app bar and this is the one so I'm just using it. Since I'm using a custom one, I would have to use a single child scroll view so that I get that scrolling effect. Next is the future builder. This future builder has a couple of uh, components that you need to define. So the first thing is your future. So this is where you will function that you have defined here, which makes that call to the API components is the builder. So this one takes two value. The first one is the context and the second one is your snapshot. Snapshot is uh, the one that actually uh, contains the information of your asynchronous and that's where we will retrieve all the details. So these are the two important things that you need to understand when you're using a future builder. All right. So as I mentioned, at the moment, we're going to look for if the snapshot data is not null. That means if it's available. So in that case, I'm going to say if it is not equal to null, what it has to do. If it is not equal to null, then I'm going to say, please re return a container. Now that container is nothing but the section. So we will see a building of those container in a moment. So, so if it's not available, then I would say, please return a container that actually displays a text stating it's loading. So initially we had just used a if condition just to check if the data is available or not, but definitely there are a lot of other states also that you could check. So I've used the snapshot with a switch and the connection state. So we're going to check if it's waiting or if it's active or if it is none or if it is completed completed so depending on the state you could actually show different data on the screen but you need to understand that whenever we say done doesn't mean that it's completed it could be an error or it could be an actual result so we also need to handle the error part so for that we also have a return type snapshot error and we say center with a text error or you want to show a pop-up dialog if not then we say return the container so this is what uh, you could do with the snapshot value. All right, so in my case, what I've done is I've kept it very simple. I'm saying that if my data is not null, then I'm gonna return a list view builder. Now this is what it is. So first thing, it, it returns a container with a height, a color, and then inside my list view builder, I have a property called item count. Now this is nothing but my uh, the data that I'm receiving, the length of it. So whatever data I'm getting, and I'm using the length. So this would give me the item count. Then I'm using an item builder. Then I'm saying return get book details. Now here what I've done is I've created a separate widget 
for this section because I do not want to overload all the content in the same section. And I'm passing all the details like the book name, book author, book cover, rating and the book view. We are creating a list view and passing all the details from my future function, future builder into this particular widget. All right, so let's see how to define the get book details, which has all the details from your um, JSON. So if you have seen the uh, UI of it, it has this overlapping two containers. So whenever we say overlapping, the first thing that comes to our mind is stack. For overlapping, simple um, a widget with all the parameters and the stack. So first I'll define this image container. So to define this image container, I'm giving a particular width, height, a decoration with a border radius 24, and then I'm passing the book cover inside it with a fit parameter with a box fit fill. So when I do this, I would get this image, this part of the um, page. So first I'll get this container. Next, we need to overlap another container over this. So for that, we will use the position widget. And um, using a proper left and top parameters will ensure that your container gets overlapped over the other container. So the top and left value that I'm using is this one. And then inside this, whatever I add is the one that gets overlapped over this container. So I could have either a left or right. So depending on your use case, you could use. So here, what I've done is I've used child. All right, so as I told you that I'm using a material just to get this um, effect. Like if you have seen my chart videos or my dashboard icons, I've used a similar kind of a material format. So I've used the same one, just filling up the text, which is like a column widget. Uh, text one below the other and this would be a row widget. So let me show you how it looks. Yeah, there you go. So my container here is a material with a container with a particular height and width. And uh, here it's nothing but a simple column widget with all the details. So my details are not static here. They are coming from the uh, server. So this is a simple example of how to overlap your containers using stack widget. So let me quickly build this and show you how it looks. All right, there you go. The app has built successfully and you can see the list view uh, with this overlapping containers. All right, so in this video, you have seen um, how to pass a simple JSON and then how to um, make a HTTP request to your external server, which Mokoro, that was the one that I used, and how to use fe uh, future for your uh, asynchronous request and uh, make sure that you update your UI depending on the state um, and by using the future builder, uh, which gives you the latest snapshot of the interactions with the future and, um, and how to build this overlapping um, container as well. So in my next video, I would uh, not be covering the JSON part. I would be covering more of the complex JSON and the UIs, how to build them. So that's it and I hope you like it. If you do, please give it a like and subscribe. If you find this informative, please do share it. Thank you.